How do you choose the titles for your work? This isn't as simple a question as it first appears, because there are numerous steps that go into it, and a work might have numerous titles over its lifetime. If you're going the traditional publishing route, this question isn't even that big a deal for you because it's not that much up to you. If you are going to get a traditional publisher, then you don't have the final say on the title for your work because that's part of their marketing mix, just like your cover, just like your cover blurb, just like the description that's gonna be on Amazon. If you're self-publishing, on the other hand, the title is completely up to you, as is the cover, as is the blurb, as is everything else, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you want to immediately go with the first title that jumps into your head. Another distinction to keep in mind here is that between the finished title that you're going to use to sell the book and the working title that you have in mind while you are actually writing the book. Of course, you can start writing a story without a title, and if it's a very short story, that's probably not going to cause you any problems. You can always title it later. You might not know what your title should be until you've written the story, but for longer works, a title can help. Just like naming your characters early on in the drafting process can help you with the drafting process, so too can choosing a title help you to unify your work and inspire where that work goes. So here are a few things to consider in coming up with a working title. Again, this doesn't necessarily have to do with selling your work. That's going to be up to you down the road or up to your publisher. But when you're writing the work, when you're choosing a title, consider your genre. If you're writing a horror novel, but your title indicates that it's going to be a sunny romance, you're going to be letting your readers down. If you're writing a coming of age story and the title makes the reader expect a bloody thriller, it's going to be a disappointment. It's going to hurt your sales, it's going to hurt your reputation in the long run. That's titles in general, but also when you're doing it as a working title, you don't want to be thinking a title that makes you think romance while you're trying to write a horror story. You don't want to be thinking about a title that makes you think of a coming of age drama while you're trying to write your thriller, or you don't want to be thinking of a thriller while you're trying to write your coming of age drama. So a title can have that unifying effect. You also want to consider your story world. What kind of world building have you done for your story? How does that tie in to your title? Consider what your protagonist's goal is. What is it that they are seeking? When J.R.R. Tolkien named the Lord of the Rings, that ring is the central MacGuffin of the story and it is the hero's central goal is to get rid of the thing. And so tying the whole concept around the ring really helped to unify the work. And then of course you should consider your central theme. You can make a thematic title. Again, the working title should help to unify the story and inspire its direction. Now, the working title is not a crutch, nor should it be a shackle. You're not bound to it forever. You don't have to try to sell the novel this way. You don't have to pitch this to publishers. You don't have to actually tell anybody what your working title is. This is just for you to help you clarify your story in your own mind. For instance, the original working title for Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice was First Impressions. Now, if you've read Pride and Prejudice or seen any of its numerous adaptations, then you probably know that a good amount of the novel is based on people's mistaken first impressions. Of course, those first impressions are mistaken because they are influenced by the pride and prejudice of the primary characters. So when it came time to publish, she chose Pride and Prejudice, which is a much more thematically tied title than First Impressions, which is more an event tied title. Also, Pride and Prejudice has alliteration in it. It's more memorable in that way. And so that's part of the reason why this becomes such a popular story. Obviously not the only one, but definitely part of it. Similarly, F. Scott Fitzgerald's working title for what became The Great Gatsby is Trimalchio in West Egg. If you have no idea who Trimalchio is, you're not alone. But that is naming the central illusion, or one of the central illusions of the story. Gatsby is loosely based on Trimalchio, and there is still a line in the final draft, if you've ever read The Great Gatsby, where he is called Trimalchio. But Trimalchio is a character from Petronius's Satyricon. Satyricon, I think that's pronounced correctly. Which comes from several decades, centuries, quite a while before Fitzgerald was writing. And it is the central illusion of the story, but again, The Great Gatsby is both more alliterative and more memorable. A few more working titles. Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind. 
started out as tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day, believe it or not, is the last line of that novel. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Ayn Rand's working title for Atlas Shrugged was The Strike, and The Strike does tie in to the central event, the central idea of the novel, but Atlas Shrugged is less spoilerific and also in some ways more thematically resonant and more memorable, it creates a more memorable illusion and image. Harper Lee's Atticus, named after its main character, becomes To Kill a Mockingbird, which is a line from the novel. To Kill a Mockingbird, more memorable. Atticus probably helped her focus the novel, though, while writing it, because although it's told from Scout's point of view, from the young girl's point of view, Atticus, the father, the lawyer, is really the main hero of the story. And George Orwell's 1984 was once the last man in Europe. It's kind of an even exchange, it feels like to me. The last man in Europe might be a little bit on the nose. It certainly helped him to focus in on Winston Smith, I think, there. But 1984 is a little easier to keep in mind, so that's probably why he went with that one. So my recommendation here, and you can take it or leave it as you will, but my recommendation is to title your work early on. Don't worry about marketing or publishing or whatever anyone else may think when deciding your working title. So when you're planning or drafting your story, choose a title that resonates for you, that has a special significance to you and or your story or your story world, your character, something like that. Something that's going to resonate, unify, and inspire you. Now when you choose your final title for publication or what your input to the publisher is going to be for that final title, depending on what publication route you decide to go with, that is when you need to start considering your reader, your target audience. And this is where research comes in. You're going to want to do some research here. You're going to want to look at other books in your genre, the best selling books or the better selling books in your genre. See what kind of titles they use to draw readers attention. A title that's unique, that fits your genre, and a title that is easy to say, to recognize and to remember. That's the kind of title you're looking for when you're selling your work. It's a title that grabs the attention of your target reader. So things like rhythm and alliteration and a keen sense of irony are all good things to think about when choosing a title. The Catcher in the Rye. If you ever read that book, the book itself has very little to do with a Catcher in the Rye. The Catcher in the Rye is just a comparison or an image that the main character comes up with. And yet, it's an incredibly bold image that keeps the novel in the reader's mind. John Dies at the End has a central irony right in it, especially if you've read that book, you know, slight spoilers here for the very early parts of John Dies at the End, that in that book, John dies at the beginning. And then he's there for most of the rest of the book. So the title certainly is intriguing. So a title with rhythm and alliteration can help attract the reader's ear. A title with symbolism and irony can attract the reader's higher sensibilities. And all that combined can make titles more striking and more memorable and make a reader more likely to pick up your book and at least see if he or she wants to read it. So I hope this helps you in your writing journey, both in choosing a working title or deciding whether or not to choose a working title and then what type, type of working title you'll choose. And when you start thinking about what kind of title you're going to publish under. If this has helped you out, guys, please leave a comment below. Comment your favorite title or a working title that you're considering for something. I'd be really curious to hear about that. And like the video and subscribe to the channel for more tips. They're not all just about titles here. Hope this helped you out, guys. And until next time, good luck and good writing. Peace.